His gospel's really long and it's jam-packed with insights and meanings. But I'm definitely not going to try and overwhelm you explaining all of them. I'm just going to talk about two important lessons that we can learn in our lives. The first is that discipleship in Jesus means that we must invite others to meet Jesus. So if we want to be authentic, true disciples of Jesus, we have to invite other people to meet him. The second lesson is that Jesus fulfills the desires of our heart. Jesus fulfills all the desires of our heart. So let's take a look in depth of these two lessons, what they mean. So the first one, authentic discipleship, means that we must invite others to meet Jesus. That whole story of the Samaritan woman at the well is a perfect example of how she became a disciple of Jesus. I think it's amazing that she teaches us how to be a disciple of Jesus when she's a Samaritan woman. Samaritans and Jews hated each other. Also, she herself was completely rejected by her community because of her past life. We see this because usually all the women from the town would go to the well together, but she's stuck going by herself. She's been ostracized because of her past. So she's definitely an unlikely hero for us in today's gospel. Now, the Samaritan woman in today's gospel has deep-seated resentment towards Jews. We talked about that. And probably towards men in general after being hurt by at least five in her past. We hear this in her tone when she speaks to Jesus. But soon she begins to trust Jesus, seeing that he's offering her a gift at the well. She realizes Jesus isn't speaking to her from a point of judgment, maybe superiority or dominance, not at all. Jesus is speaking to her from compassion, from understanding, and a place of love. And it's when she sees this that her heart begins to be transformed and starts to fill with hope. Such a moment of conversion leads her to leave that full water jar. The only reason she left the town to go to the well was to fill her water jar for the day. She left her full water jar and ran back to her town and said, Listen, you've got to meet this man who told me everything I've ever done. Come and meet Jesus, the Messiah. This woman's testimony in her town led many to come then to meet Jesus at the well to encounter him for the first time. When she said, come and see the man who told me everything I've ever did, could he be the Messiah? The Samaritans who went to meet Jesus were so touched by that experience that they invited this Jewish man, again, an enemy of a Samaritan, come and stay with us in our home. Such a shocking invitation. It speaks to all of their immediate conversion. They're welcoming this Jewish man into their homes. We hear then how Jesus stayed with them for two days, speaking with them. And many more came to believe in that town because of his words. So all these new Samaritan converts thank this woman at the end of this gospel. Picture this. They had ostracized her from the community. And now they are thanking her for the great gift that she has given them of introducing them to Jesus just three days ago. So we see how once Jesus touches our heart, he heals us, he redeems us completely. And thanks to her invitation, all these Samaritans can say, the last line in our gospel, truly you are the savior of the world. And it's all because she invited them to come and meet Jesus. So thanks to her, so many people encountered the Messiah. And that power of true discipleship that invites others, not only redeems others, saves others, but it also heals and redeems ourselves. That's how important discipleship is. That's how important inviting other people to meet Jesus is. My friends, if we call ourselves Christians, if we call ourselves followers of Jesus, we too must be like the Samaritan woman and invite others to meet him. We need to invite them to come to Mass on Sundays with us. We need to invite them to read the Bible with us. We need to invite them to pray with us. We need to invite them to come with us to go to confession. We need to invite them to come and see the man who told us everything that we've ever done. Come and see Jesus. We need to invite them. Now this may, inside your heart when you're listening to this, may seem like a difficult or daunting task. 
We may be afraid of what people will say or what they'll think of us. When I think about it, that's the first barriers that people tell me about. Well, what are gonna, people going to say about me? What are they going to think about me? Well, let's look at these little barriers that seem to, to, to hold us prisoner and knock those down. So what if they say no? What if they say no? No, thank you. Come to Mass. No, thank you. Come to confession with me. No, thank you. Well, you know what? If we don't ask, the answer was already no, so nothing has changed. If they say no, nothing has changed. Nothing is lost. There's no harm in hearing the answer that's already being lived. That second barrier that we seem to put up right away, what will people think of us? What will people think of me? Well, I don't mean to shock you folks, but the truth is they probably already know you're Catholic. They probably already know that your faith is, is somewhat important to you, that maybe you go to church. So it won't come as a shock to them that you want to invite them to participate in something that's important to you. In fact, you're offering them a gift, just like Jesus offered a gift at the well. It's the most beautiful gift. There's no greater gift than introducing someone to God, to Jesus. There's no greater gift. And in fact, inviting people to that great gift is a true sign of love, a true sign that you care about another person. Think about this for a minute. Even, if in the story, even in the story of the Samaritan woman at the well, it was Jesus who did the work. He was the one who spent two days in that town speaking to them, opening their hearts, changing their lives. The only role that Samaritan woman was was to invite them. Come. Come and meet this man. That's all she did. It was invite. That was her role. Jesus did the work in that situation. Similarly, for us, it's not necessary to have these amazing logical arguments, rock-solid reason, that if we say this, this, and this, and follow this formula, we're going to convert our friends, our families, the people we work with, our neighbors. You know just as well as I do, it doesn't work that way. Our job is to invite people to meet Jesus, to invite people to encounter Jesus, and to trust, to trust, to trust, to trust, to trust that Jesus will do the work. That's his job. He will transform their hearts and touch their hearts in ways that we could never do ourselves. Jesus will do the work, but we're called to invite people to meet him. True discipleship means inviting people to meet Jesus, the first lesson. The second lesson is Jesus fulfills the desires of our heart. Jesus fulfills the desires of our heart. This encounter with the Samaritan woman happens at Jacob's well. Jacob was one of the great patriarchs of Israel's history. It was at that same well that he met his wife, his soon-to-be wife, Rachel. He fell in love and got married. So it's no coincidence that Jesus meets this woman who has been seeking love from six different men in her life, only to return to the well day after day, still thirsty, seeking love. The love that she's been seeking has not been found in the past. And Jesus meets her there. There's no coincidence that that's the location of this meeting. Jesus then offers her living waters that will quench the thirst of her heart once and for all. It is his love, the love of God himself, that will fill her heart and satisfy the longing of her soul for all eternity. Similarly, we, may, we too... When you stop and think about it, we too feel that perpetual thirst in our hearts for love, an infinite love, the love that comes from God. And we're often disappointed when we seek this love in other people, in other things, but they don't, don't fulfill those longings of our heart completely. We're often disappointed. And this can be in the person of our spouse, could be in our families, in our friends. We seek love, we seek this fulfillment, Maybe in our jobs, in sports, in some sort of achievements, our interests, our hobbies. But they never quench our thirst. We're going back each day to a different well, seeking living waters, but we're not finding it. And if we pause, if we honestly pause from the busyness of our lives, we can still feel that thirst for the divine deep within us. It remains unfulfilled. And it looks just like the Samaritan woman. We yearn for those living waters that will gush forth from the inner parts of our souls, filling us with an unending joy. 
My friends, it's only by inviting Jesus into our hearts that this thirst will be quenched. It's through a deep and personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself that these living waters will spring up within our hearts, within our souls, within our lives, bringing us the lasting happiness and the fulfillment that we're seeking in life in all sorts of different wells. My friends, Jesus is waiting at the well for us today, just like he was waiting for the Samaritan woman that day. How about we ask ourselves, have we been or become comfortable in a routine of going to another well each day, drinking from waters that never quench our thirst? How about we ask him today for those living waters? I'm going to invite you to join me in a prayer, so just listen to the words and close your eyes if it's helpful. And make this prayer your own. Jesus, I come to you today at the well. You know I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty for your love in my heart. You know everything that I've ever done in my life. And yet you still love me. You still wait for me. You still offer me a drink. Thank you for your love. Thank you for waiting for me to get to this point in my life. Thank you for offering me these living waters. I wasn't ready until now, I wasn't ready. But this Lent fact today, I want to say yes. I want to say yes to receiving your living waters. I say yes to being an authentic disciple of yours. I say yes to welcoming your love into my heart. I say yes to you, Jesus, who are my Lord and my God. Today you offer me the gift of living waters water that will quench the deep thirst in my heart. Jesus, please give me these living waters because I never want to be thirsty again. I never want to drink from another well again. I never want to be without your love again. As I drink from these waters today, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord. Give me courage. Give me strength. Give me the boldness that I need to invite everyone I know to meet you. Touch their hearts, Lord. I pray that you touch their hearts. Open their eyes to see what I see. Open their minds to understand that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, I confess today that you are truly the Savior of the world. Amen.